So what happened was I literally was able to tend to literally 100x in some cases. Cosmos will become the internet of blockchains. This should be like the Lego building block set to just quickly assemble applications very quickly. We're really around the concept of minimizing that distance between your intention and your execution. Hi, Dan. Hey, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Doing well. Nice. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, man. Finally got to make it here. Pretty cool spot. So it's pretty obvious you're the founder of Cosmology. So what is Cosmology doing? Uh, that's a great question. I like to think of it as like sort of the Adobe for Web3 uh, in the sense that um, one, it's very creative. Two, there's a suite of products, um, interdependent products in the sense that like, you know, you can use Photoshop, you can use Illustrator, After Effects, and Premiere. You can use them together. You can use them by themselves. Uh, and so similarly, we have like a suite of products, you know, Telescope or Cosmos Kit, you don't have to use them together, but you can, you can also use them by themselves. And additionally, you know, our goal is to minimize the distance between your ideas, the execution of your ideas, so that you can be creative and uh, actually focus on, you know, the things that count, the mm -hmm. things that matter, not getting lost in the mundane repetitive details of, you know, boilerplates and setting things up and wiring and stitching technologies together. And um, can you name a couple of things you're, you're offering in that creative suite? Of, of tools? Yeah. Um, when I came into Cosmos, I had this idea. I wanted to automate investment strategies in Osmosis. And, you know, it took me like literally about a week to even figure out how to encode a transaction uh, with like the different encoders and then broadcast it to the uh, blockchain and, you know, do it through a wallet. And it, it was one of those moments where I'm like, wow, I really was inspired, but I almost like deflated all of my inspiration because, you know, it's like you're, you think you're just going to, let's say, go on a straight line. You're on, on a road trip, like from LA to San Francisco, but it's, the level of detail kind of zooms in, you know, there's all these tiny little squiggles. And before you know, there's all these detours and you kind of get lost at some point. And I think there was a risk that a lot of front end developers at that moment in time in the cosmos probably had given up or were on the brink of giving up uh, because you can rarely actually get to the idea because of all the dependencies that you need to kind of understand from front end all the way to the back end. So um, what the first product I did, Telescope, it basically reads the code uh, written by the back end developers and introspects it in kind of like a printing press. We'll just print and generate all of the client code all the encoders, all the crazy protobuf and amino encoding so that now you can just start broadcasting transactions. Um, so I wanted to give like a little bit of the back information to understand like why mm -hmm. uh, we built that because front end developers shouldn't have to understand uh, encoders, right? They shouldn't have to understand blockchain in order to build a front end or a UI on top of uh, a smart contract or a blockchain. So Telescope and TS Code Gen respectively for smart contracts They effectively read the blockchain, they read the smart contract code, and they generate and print these very easy to use libraries that can be used by basically junior developers, um, senior developers too, obviously, but even junior ones, mm -hmm. um, without having to understand all the details of blockchain. And they can start automatically, uh, very quickly building UI. So, you know, again, the idea is just to get people closer to that execution of their idea without getting lost in the mundane details of, uh, the technological requirements to you know, interact with blockchains. And can you give an, a more broader overview of what, what other tools mm -hmm. do you guys have? Uh, so after Telescope and TS Code Gen, the other problem I saw was wallet connections. Um, I saw numerous implementations of people connecting to Kepler and then like some new wallets started coming out and we're like, hey, why don't we make this adapter? Um, we saw that there was Cosmodal Uh, was created originally by Delvin and some folks at uh, Kepler and Chainapsis. And we're like, hey, like, what do you think if we could kind of uh, improve this and maybe make it more abstract? So we kind of inherited that uh, code base and then completely re-architected it so that it wasn't just Kepler, but, you know, Leap, Cosmos Station, Ledger, XDeFi, uh, Vectus, Frontier. We support an array of, I think, 15 plus wallets now. The idea is to make a unified interface Uh, while you can connect to many wallets. So Cosmos Kit was a really easy way to 
make the connection to wallets very easy mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, sign broadcast transactions. But then we even took it further because I'm like, okay, now we've got Telescope, TS Cogen, and Cosmos Kit. Um, what if we made a boilerplate um, generator for giving developers like a starting place where in seconds they can just start kicking off new projects? Like if you have an idea and you're like, hey, I just want to like scaffold something really quick and just try this out. So we came up with Create Cosmos App. Uh, the name actually stems from very famous boilerplate projects like Create React App, Create Next App. And so Create Cosmos App literally in seconds just gives you everything you need, a user interface, a wallet connection with Cosmos Kit, and any of the libraries you might need like Telescope or TS Cogen. So what I like to think about is it, like our first kind of umbrella product where we have all these little puzzle pieces um, and they kind of stitches them together in a cohesive way. Uh, so that you can get up and running very quickly. And Starship is a CI CD tool, a testing and simulation environment for the Cosmos. So what that means is that you can actually simulate multiple blockchains uh, when you're uh, developing applications. This is super important because, you know, if you, you go back to before I got into Web3 and I was actually in Web2 and I was building a database um, company and... You know, I found that like, you know, I'd be editing SQL and then I would want to like put the SQL in the database and then see what the changes were and the amount of time it took me to, you know, write some code and then see the changes in the application based off of the code that I wrote. You know, sometimes it could be upwards of like 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 30 seconds, uh, depending on what it was. Mm -hmm. And I thought there's got to be a better way. So I actually built a testing uh, environment that would kind of seed all the database migrations and instantaneously uh, in a test case would then tell me if like my test cases pass or fail, mm -hmm. but it was within seconds and it would actually roll the database back. Uh, so, so what happened was I literally was able to tend to probably literally hundred X in some cases, my development, because, uh, the way that I was able to just take in a huge chunk of time out of the development process and reduce that developer fatigue. So I could just start writing code and seeing the result of that code instantaneously. Mm -hmm. When I came into Web3, I realized how far behind Web3 was uh, compared to Web2 in a myriad of ways, uh, including testing. And uh, Anmol and I got together at Cosmoverse in Medellin, and we were talking to Simon and Ethan. We're like, you know, how are you guys testing all your libraries? And is there like a product you're using? And they're like, well, you know, we have this code here, here, and here, and it was kind of like displayed around the code base, but nothing kind of like cohesive and packaged up. We're like, hey, well, what if we, you know, turn this into a product? Mm -hmm. And so actually, uh, you know, Anmol and I got together, actually you were there, uh, and he, he wheeled it into existence, a, a proof of concept that we could actually work to test Osmo.js that night. And so anyway, so long story short, um, Starship was born. The purpose of Starship is to create an environment that gives developers that instantaneous feedback that allows them to develop much more rapidly um, and also kind of reduces the developer fatigue so that you can actually push more code, um, try more test cases, and ultimately have more secure code, which is really an awesome part of having mm -hmm. testing. So in general, I would say we're really trying to push for a test-driven development philosophy in Cosmos, and uh, Starship was our first implementation to kind of push um, these, these philosophies. So what does Starship do? Anmol referred to it as a mini Cosmos, I think. So how, how does it like on a top level work? Yeah, so, you know, mesh security, for example, it allows you to um, cross stake assets from like, let's say Osmosis and Juno and let's say Neutron or a couple other chains that might be a part of the mesh. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're building a blockchain on one of these teams, you probably have some bash scripts that spin up a Docker image of your blockchain. But now what do you want to do when you want to have your chain work with these other two chains? Mm -hmm. How do they spin up? How do you spin up the, the relayers and all these inter interconnected services? So Starship is really good at orchestrating multiple chains, multiple services, and kind of automating everything with very simple configuration. So in literally just a few minutes, you can spin up like three chains or five chains or 10 chains with a variable number of validators and IBC relayers. We also give you an explorer. We also give you a chain registry and other interesting things. But the idea there is just to give uh, developers the ability to simulate multiple blockchains and test against them as if it was production. Uh, but the beauty is that because it's local, 
you have 100% reliability. Mm -hmm. If there's no internet, you can still write code. You're not testing code on some dev net or on some test net or some uh, production uh, blockchain that who knows wh wh what's going to happen with the reliability of these nodes, how many other people are also testing on them. And so uh, Starship just gives you this very robust way to test multiple chains. Um, at Awesome Wasm, you also announced some other new things. Mm -hmm. You talked about new additions to, to the company, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what's new on that, on that side? Yeah, so you know, most people know us for our front end work that we've done in the Cosmos. Um, so surprise, we um, brought Terran One, and uh, you know, William Chen, now the founder of Terran One, is our head of research and development. And what this means is we're effectively now taking the tooling that everyone knows from Cosmology and kind of bringing that same approach now to building tooling for Cosmosm. And you know, by bringing in William. We're so excited because you know, he's one of the greatest developers and he helped build one of the biggest ecosystems. And I, I would like to say the Cosmos ecosystem because, you know, Terra did build on the Cosmos SDK. And with his expertise and knowledge, we're really excited because, you know, that kind of expands upon our offering to developers to build that kind of like 360, that full circle, you know, front and back end, if you want to use Web2 terms or the front end and the contracts. Um, so we offer that full end-to-end -end developer experience. William had wielded into existence many amazing products around Cosmosm. And because of his experience, he was able to conceive of ideas and implement them, uh, such as building a new language on top of Cosmosm. You know, because if you look at a typical Cosmosm contract, it's so general purpose the way that it's implemented that you can have multiple files, you have all these different Rust macros, and you know, in a way, it can be a little bit almost too generalized. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, what he did was looked at a lot of other uh, networks like Solana and other ecosystems, and how they kind of package up their contracts in a very semantic way, and found a way to create this language that um, it's actually kind of embodying the contract and the state and the queries and the execute uh, messages, but in one uh, semantic, cohesive uh, way that um, compiles down to Cosmosm. Mm -hmm. So you can still leverage every feature of Cosmosm, uh, but the way that you write it is in a much more uh, simple and elegant way that we believe can actually bring in more developers uh, to building smart contracts in the Cosmos. And in, in a way, it's like we have all these great tools, but sometimes we have to think about the pool of developers that can access them. And so I think what's great about William's work and CW Script and Cosmosm is that we feel we can kind of lower the bar uh, and create like some of the best developer experiences uh, for engineers that want to build smart contracts. And CW Script is a great first step towards kind of opening the floodgates to a new set of developers uh, by kind of lowering the bar and making it easier to contribute. Another example of this is CW Simulate, which actually can run Cosmosm in the browser. Mm -hmm. So imagine the developer experience that we can create where not only do we have a simpler language, but also we can run it in the browser. So, you know, our goal is effectively to make the best developer experience end to end from the front end uh, to contracts uh, and eventually the full stack. So, you know, with Starship, we'll be able to simulate the, the chains themselves, the Cosmosm contracts, and even spin up front end frameworks. So uh, that's, that's really exciting. So I heard that there will be um, a new version of Cosmos Kit, right? Cosmos Kit mm -hmm. 2.0. So what's new with that? So Cosmos Kit 2.0, a few things. Uh, when we got a lot of feedback from folks in the Cosmos, they were like, hey, you know, we want to use Cosmos Kit, but, you know, you're using React. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we use React, but we don't want to use Chakra, uh, which is a UI kit. And so, you know, the, the problem with front-end development is that there's like a thousand different ways to do the same thing. There's like 15, probably 20 different front-end rendering frameworks, such as, you know, React, Vue, Svelte, Angular, Web Components, SolidJS, the list goes on. And so, you know, the first thing we, we looked at is like, number one, you know, for the modal in Cosmos Kit, is there a way that, <clears throat> number one, we should remove Chakra because everyone's been complaining. Some people use Tailwind. But also, is there a way to support more than React? Uh, so we actually built a system that's transpiling or basically just generating code uh, from one source file. We can generate Vue.js. We can generate React. We can generate Solid. Now, this is actually part of another project we're launching called Interchain UI with Design DAO. So basically, Cosmos Kit 2, the UI will be all powered by Interchain UI, 
which is a, you know, works with any, it's framework agnostic. Um, we will officially support React at first with Cosmos Kit 2 because there are some bindings with like, you know, hotkeys and things we need to map for each framework. But as far as the UI goes, it's already uh, something that will work on all these systems. The second piece of that is that because we've stripped out Chakra and used this very lightweight version of React that is compiled from our new system, um, Interchain UI, the bundle size has gone down to about one-sixth of the size. Um, so it's a much more efficient package to serve over the wire. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, eventually we'll be much more compatible with all the various rendering frameworks that folks are using. Um, so in addition to Interchain UI, uh, Cosmos Kit 2 also has native ledger support. Uh, so that's one thing we're really excited about. You just plug in your USB and you know you don't have to go through another wallet. You literally can just connect directly to your ledger from mm -hmm. Cosmos Kit. Um, and what's what's your vision for, for Interchain UI? What's, where do you see it going? You know, again, I just think that over the years, I think that JavaScript in the ecosystem, it's one of the hardest ecosystems because it's constantly evolving and changing. And I think we need to realize that we have to build systems that are meant to evolve or built for change. Mm -hmm. And I think inter, Interchain UI, it's purpose built to kind of roll with the times, right? If all of a sudden you want to move from React to Vue.js, um, well, guess what? All the components in Interchain UI already work in both frameworks. So that is a part of it. The other part is we want to support multiple categories of components. So that means we want to have DEX components, staking components, governance components, um, NFT components, DAO components. Um, basically, the idea should be that this should be like the Lego building block set to just quickly assemble applications very quickly. I know there are some front-end developers that like to do their own front-end, but a lot of folks that might be more interested in smart contracts or back-ends and, and blockchains they probably just want to have a UI kit that kind of comes ready to go um, off the shelf and you can kind of just quickly snap together the, these UI components to assemble your application. So I think Interchain UI will be really great for validators, uh, teams that want to launch new blockchains, uh, smart contract developers that want to deploy dApps on top of their contracts. And effectively, we should have most of the components needed. Um, and if not... Uh, you should be able to create them and customize it. So, you know, to kind of sum it up, I think the beauty of Interchain UI will be, one, the uh, chain agnostic rendering to any front end rendering framework, the multiple categories of not only basic UI elements that you would expect from a UI kit from the Web2 world, but also kits for DEXs, NFTs, et cetera, et cetera. And that, and also just beautiful design because uh, the components were, you know, designed with a design DAO. So really excited about that. And um, where do you see um, Cosmos going? Like, what do you think it will evolve into? What's your vision? On, yeah, where, where do you think it will go? The Cosmos will become the Internet of Blockchains. Um, I think I'm <clears throat> super bullish on IBC. I, I think a lot about Sunny's metaphor around shipping containers. And, you know, if you look at shipping containers, what does it really enable? It's like commerce and trade, mm -hmm. right? Because you've got like some stuff that's in China, that's shipping to the States or whatnot. You have these two sovereign nations, uh, but they can have this unified way of uh, interoperating with uh, goods and trade. So I think in the future where we have the internet of blockchains, um, we'll have this third generation of blockchain that will enable commerce. You know, we saw the first generation was digital money. The second generation was programmable money. And the third generation is interoperability. But what that enables is, is commerce, which I think is where we needed to go in order to have real value in the Web3 and blockchain space. And how does that play into cosm the, the goals of cosmology? I, well, I guess in some, in, in that metaphor, we're, we're kind of building the, you know, a lot of the infrastructure. But I, you know, where I see cosmology, we're really around the concept of minimizing that distance between your intention and your execution and continually like minimizing that distance, like threading the needle so close to then, you know, if you have an idea, we want to get it so that within seconds you can start building it. It's not like you, you get this idea and then you're like, oh, well, wait a minute. Now I have to do this, this. Instead, it's like, no, no, no. You can literally just go right to the feature or right to the idea because we provide all that mundane boilerplate. We just generate it with metaprogramming or our tooling. And that way you can kind of save that vital energy uh, to focus on what counts and execute your ideas. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks then for 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 the updates on what what's going on with cosmology, and yeah, we would love to have you here again to see what what the future brings to cosmology and cosmology to cosmos. All right. Well, thank you by the way um, for all the help. I, all the designs you've done with our team has been phenomenal. Thank and, you. And uh, really excited about our collaboration. So, and especially with Interchain UI, it's been really exciting. And uh, can't wait for more collaborations together. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.